W-0-T-X. Repeater. This is K1DBC. The DRC Learning Net will start in one minute. All stations please stand by while the repeaters are placed into net mode.
Good evening and welcome. This is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie K1 DBC. My name is Doron. That's Delta Oscar, Romeo Oscar, November. I am net control for the Denver Radio Club Learning Net tonight. This is a directed net for the purpose of connecting amateurs seeking help or advice with Elmer's willing to mentor. This net meets this net meets every Wednesday except the third Wednesday of the month at 19:30 hours on the W0TX repeaters uh, with frequencies 145.490 and link with 448.625. Both have a negative offset and a tone of 100. This net can be broken at any time for emergency or priority traffic by using the word break. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? For recognition by net control, please use your call sign. Everyone is welcome. This is an on-air meeting for amateurs seeking help and Elmers giving their time to mentor. If you have any questions for the Learning Net and don't yet have your license or otherwise wish to contact the Net, you may do so via email at drclearningnet at gmail.com. We also have a public mailing list at groups.io forward slash g forward slash ham learning net. And we're also on YouTube forward slash uh, youtube.com forward slash W E R E G R eight. That's Whiskey Edward Romeo Edward Golf Romeo eight. You can also search for W zero T X D R C and you should find it as well. This is K1DBC Net Control. We will begin by inviting Elmers only to check in with with or without traffic. All Elmers, please check in now. Alpha, Alpha, Zero, Juliet Kilo, AA, Zero, JK, Fred Narvada, good evening. All right, Net Control would like to wish uh, and acknowledge, <laughs> wish to thank and acknowledge the following Elmers AA zero JK Fred. Thank you for checking in. All right, and then on the web, we had uh, KE0SUM, Jonathan, and K0KPS, Kevin. Thank you both for checking in online here. All right, all other check-ins to the net will be taken in alphabetical groups based on the first letter of the suffix of the operator's call sign. That will be the first letter after the number in your call sign. Uh, please try to use I2 phonetics as you can, uh, if you can as you check in and indicate if you have traffic or questions for Elmer's as you do. If your suffix begins with the letters A through M, Alpha through Mike, please check in now. Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Alpha, Foxtrot, Quebec, Troy, Liquid, W, Zero, T, Kilo 6 Hotel, Juliet Victor, Tom Arvada, no traffic. Whiskey, Charlie, Brian, Wheat Ridge, no traffic. 
Kentucky Delta 6, Delta Oscar Kilo, Ritz in Arvada, no traffic. Good evening, Tom. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. We'll go ahead and hold up there for just a moment. All right, Net Control, we'd like to welcome them knowledge the following check ins KF0 AFQ Troy. Uh, there's a double, but I uh, did. Uh, Catch it, uh, K0LAI Larry, um, K6HJV Tom, AF0E Alex, KF0AWC Brian, and WD6DOK Rich. Uh, thank you all for checking in. All right, once more. Uh, if your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, uh, please check in now with your call sign, your name, and let us know if you have traffic or questions. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up the whole alphabet. This is K1DBC Net Control. If your suffix begins with the letters A through Z, alpha through Zulu, and you'd like to check in to the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net just for the count, or if you have traffic or questions, uh, please do so with your uh, call sign, your name, and let us know if you have any traffic or questions. Please call now. Sierra, Ken and Brewfield. No traffic. Kilo Echo Zero, Whiskey Mike, Oscar. No traffic. Jacob, Mobile, and Golden. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. We had, uh, I'd like to welcome knowledge of the following check-ins, K0YES Ken and KE0WMO Jacob. Thank you both for checking in. Uh, another call, if you'd like to check into the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net just for the count, or uh, if you have any traffic or questions, uh, we're taking all calls. Alpha through Zulu, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Uh, there's quite a few more opportunities uh, throughout the net to check in if you didn't get the opportunity at the moment. But, uh, um, y well, I don't see anybody indicated they had any traffic. Um, but uh, if anybody did have any traffic or if there are any other uh, additional check-ins, uh, please call now. All right, uh, sounds good. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. I guess I can uh, get things uh, started here. Uh, I mean, Happy New Year's to everybody. Hopefully this year brings uh, better tidings and better better things for all of us. A um, little bit quiet at the moment. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, other things going on currently, but um, uh, I can bring some things up. But if, uh, if anybody has any comments, questions, anything else they'd like to bring up at the moment, uh, please call now. K-E-0-S-U-M, question. 
Yeah, K E zero S U M. Go ahead. Well, this might be one for uh, Fred, or uh, maybe you know. Uh, I've kind of been studying it, and I'm wondering. I have a portable vertical wolf recoil, and uh, wondering exactly how much does my coax cable become a counterpoise, and if length also helps in determining that counterpoise, if it does. K zero S U M. Back to net. A0JK. Uh, great question there. Uh, SUM, Jonathan, uh, AA0JK. Fred, go ahead. Uh, does that have uh, a connector on it to where you can install a counterpoise uh, ground wire on it, Jonathan? Oh, no, the antenna, Wolf River Coil, it's a nice vertical, 102-inch stainless whip with a base-loaded coil that I can tune. And, of course, it came with three counterpoises. I'm just curious as how much my coax cable acts as a counterpoise, and then does length come into any difference as it does sometimes with radials? Do you have those counterpoises hooked up? I, I normally always use them. Uh, I'm doing it more for a theoretical point of view uh, about, uh, say you hook it up without the counterpoises, uh, how does your coax react? Very poorly. Anytime you don't have a counterpoise, that uh, uh, RF is going to come right back down and into the shack and wreak havoc with uh, uh, your radio. So, and uh, instead of uh, generating RF, it's going to generate heat, and it's a good way to burn up the uh, finals in your transmitter. So it's always highly recommended that you use those uh, counterpoise uh, that is supplied by the manufacturer and uh, keep that RF out of your, your uh, uh, coax feed lines. In fact, you know, you might even consider uh, uh, an isolation transformer there so that it can't come back down the, the uh, coax. W0TX, repeater. Back to net control. All right, sounds good. Hey, JK, Fred, uh, this is k one dbc Net Control. Yeah, hopefully that uh, uh, answered your question there, Casey. You're asking him, uh, Jonathan. I know we've kind of talked about a little bit about how a coiled uh, coax in a, on its own can 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 alter signals and things like that. So that the run of the cable too could could definitely uh, any excess, um, depending on how that's how it's set up might, might cause some some issues. But I know we've somewhat spoken about that, but uh, great, great question there. Anything else on that, uh, Jonathan or uh, Fred or anyone else? Uh, please call now. Well, I appreciate your thoughts, and uh, I guess uh, that's part of why I bought an antenna analyzer, so I could uh, see what was going on. And uh, I appreciate your thoughts and comments. KU0, SUM, back to that. All right, sounds good, uh, KE0SUM. This is K1DBC Net Control. All right, anyone else on that topic of uh, kind of just a theoretical uh, um, coax becoming a counterpoise uh, with if you, if you don't use a proper uh, counterpoise or, or anything else on, on the discussion uh, that was just brought up or anything else you'd like to uh, bring up, please call there.
All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Um, does anybody else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything you'd like to bring up for the net? Um, otherwise, I can definitely uh, bring up some, some things that uh, have come up. Yes, you am. Comment? Yeah, go ahead with the comment. I've got to throw out a plug. Um, local ham radio operator who likes to in fox hunts, uh, and I mentioned this, I think, even last week, but i got to plug it again. Uh, N0 CFM. Uh, Robert uh, is having a fox hunt on January 20th, and the boundaries are going to be I-70 on the north, I-225 on the east, and I-25 on the west where they come to join. So it's kind of an interesting area, but uh, everybody's welcome to come and play. Uh, if you want to find out more, uh, Robert suggests you email him. His uh, address is good on QRZ. Again, it's N0CFM. Now, you had to give it a plug. I played last month and had a blast. Back to me. All right, Jonathan uh, K0SUM, uh, good uh, good uh, chat there, um, or a good plug there about uh, N0CFM um, doing a fox hunt on uh, January 21st, I think is what you said. Um, and uh, you can uh, definitely contact him through his uh, QRZ page. Uh, so very, very cool. Uh, fox hunt coming up here. Question? Yeah, go ahead with the question. Yeah, this is uh, Whiskey Delta 6 Delta Oscar Kilo. Um, going back to the antenna uh, question, uh, I believe, uh, I think it was Fred, I, I could be wrong, but mentioned uh, something about an isolation transformer in the circuit. Um, uh, it, well, let me ask this was that true? JK. Yeah, A is your JK. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, a Valen is basically a, uh, a transformer. A Valen, either a, a balanced or unbalanced, uh, dependent upon your uh, configuration of what kind of co coax you're uh, using, or uh, un un. Uh, Balan. Uh, Balan is kind of just a general term for transformer that uh, uh, compensates for a balanced or to unbalanced or an un, -un which is an unbalanced to unbalanced uh, feed line to antenna. Okay, the balance then normally is uh, fed right at the antenna, is that that's correct? Uh, that's correct. Like in a dipole, you'll see them a lot of times, they're right at the center of the dipole, uh, between the main element and the counterpoise. Okay, is there ever anything new, any kind of an isolation transformer down the feed line, say, just before the rig, that, that type of thing? Sometimes you'll find them inside a uh, uh, antenna tuner. Uh, there, are a lot of times you'll you'll find uh, uh, a, a ballon inside of there. Or uh, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever used one down any further than uh, from the uh, feed line. Okay, then. Um well, I think of isolation. Uh, so if RF was coming back down the feed line into the rig, it, it would it could bridge that uh, transformer and go right right into the rig. Does that sound right? No, its, it's sole purpose is to uh, try to uh, isolate uh, that so it doesn't get back down into your radio. It doesn't come down your coax or, or uh, twin lead. Okay, I'm, that's what I kind of thought, but it sounds like to me that 
it was very possible for, I mean, RF does whatever RF wants to do, I guess. And uh, I would think that if it was, uh, you know, feed coming back down, it would uh, just jump that isolation transformer and come right back into the rig. But I guess from what I'm hearing, that's not true then. AA0JK, back to net control. Okay, sounds good. I uh, wasn't sure if there was any other uh, remaining questions or anything, any other follow-up on that. Um, if anybody else has anything on that or if there's any other uh, comments, questions, go ahead, please. Yeah, Zorn, I, I, maybe he, uh, I didn't hear his answer if there was one to my last question. Uh, the purpose, uh, purpose of the isolation transformer is to uh, prevent that, uh, uh, come, that RF from coming back down your feed line. So uh, if, if you're still having issues there, uh, you've got some other problems going on there and uh, uh, a very bad mismatch of some sort. <laughs> but uh, that's the whole purpose of that, uh, uh, that ballon is to isolate your, your feed line uh, and balance, balance uh, compensate for any mismatch that uh, you have there. W0TX, repeater. Okay, so you could have a high mismatch and have the balance in there just uh, before the, uh, the exciter and the exciter would be protected? Define exciter. Uh, your transmitter, 100 watts. Uh, no, I think we're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill here. <laughs> no, uh, I'm I'm not uh, quite sure exactly uh, what uh, you're, you're trying to uh, address here, but uh, the whole sole purpose of that is to. Uh, compensate for any mismatch that you have uh, like for instance you know if you're if you're uh, uh, using a uh, Wyndham uh, you have a four to one uh, ballon there and it's compensating for the the mismatch there uh, between your your main element and your counterpoise and uh, and then uh, isolate the, the antenna there from the uh, the, the coax. Okay, well, maybe I'm I, I'm probably all all wrong here. When I think of something isolation, I, I think that it's it's separated. Like uh, I don't know what is an LM. I can't think of the chip number, but they use them as isolation. Uh, uh, separate uh, two particular devices, and that's what I was thinking. Maybe that the, the uh, uh, this transformer was doing. It was actually isolating, but it it sounds like that's not the case. Uh, maybe our use of isolating uh, is not the proper term here. <laughs> uh, it's 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 just trying to trying to uh, compensate for the mismatch. Okay, I understand the mismatch. At least I think I do. Anyway. And uh, so the, but the isolation part of it, then maybe that's where we're, we're getting confused. And uh, I just think of it, it actually separates it. And that's not the case, I guess, because, well, the RF has got to go through it. So it's going to jump it even if it isn't an isolation, correct? It's a transformer. If you take a look at the basics of what a transformer does, you've got a primary and you've got a secondary. And then uh, the current generated on one side uh, generates a magnetic field that generates a current in the secondary. And uh, that's uh, uh, the basic, basic fundamentals of the transformer. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I didn't mean to. 
uh, make this thing a, something that's not anyway. All right, back to net. WD sixty. Okay. Okay, Doc. Wish I could have uh, made that a bit, a little bit clearer here. Uh, looking up, uh, you know, some of the websites there on uh, balance and read up on those and and uh, get a little bit more uh, clarification there on exactly what that Balin is uh, doing. So uh, I've, I've written some articles up in the past on that, and I don't know where, I don't know whether those are on the uh, W0TX uh, website or whether those went to our, our previous uh, uh, AT&T connection that we lost here some time back lost a lot of articles there, so I'm not sure exactly where I've posted those. AA0JK, back to net control. Okay, real quick. Um, I, I'm thinking of, of an isolation transformer. It, it just completely separates it, but that's not the case, I believe, on a ballot. And uh, so I, I have used ballots and, and so forth, but... All right, thank you very much, and I apologize if I uh, got things messed up here. Whiskey Delta 6, Delta Oscar Kilo. No apology necessary. No apology necessary. We just need to get on the same page here and and use the proper terminology. I'm probably just not quite clear uh, in uh, my, my uh, explanation there. But uh, do a little bit of reading up on it. Plenty of articles uh, on the internet, and see if it won't uh, uh, clarify uh, what uh, you're, you're trying to uh, understand. There, I'll ha have to do a little bit of uh, researching myself. See if I can't write something up that uh, uh, will help out here a little bit, a little bit clearer explanation, and get it posted maybe on uh, uh, the uh, roundtable. AA0JK, back to net control. Sorry for the confusion. No, you were fine. Uh, yeah, you were fine. It was, it was not a problem. Whiskey Delta 6, Delta Oscar Kilo. All right, no problem. This is uh, K1DBC Net Control, uh, WDCXDOK and uh, A0JK. Thanks for the uh, follow-up there as well. And uh, uh, K0KPS has also uh, put some uh, information here in the chat uh, uh, just talking about uh, RF choke uh, used to prevent stray RF from uh, traveling back down the surface uh, coax uh, shield conductor um, into the ham hatch. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, all of this is very... Um, it's, this is all electronics, and it's uh, it can be complex until you uh, kind of say it out loud and, and think about this. So it can be... Kind of a mystery sometimes. So, yeah, not a problem, and uh, glad we kind of uh, delved through that a little bit. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, on the files section of our groups.io, you can do a search for Balin, and you can find some things, and it's... Uh, a little bit funky. You kind of have to have an email client like Outlook or something. Um, I've been trying to get these converted for a while now, but uh, haven't really been successful. Uh, but yeah, there's some information there. There's some information on our um, on our uh, uh, n uh, round table as well, I believe. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I'll just go ahead and take this opportunity to uh, take any further check-ins. Uh, if you've just tuned in, uh, I'm Net Control for the Learning Net. It's an on-air meeting for amateurs seeking help and Elmer's giving their time to help us. Everyone is welcome to join in. If there's anyone who wishes to check in at this time, please do so with your call sign, uh, your name, and state if you have traffic or questions for the net. Please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Does anybody else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else for the net you'd like to bring up? Please call now. Clay, 
Yeah, K zero L A I. Larry, go ahead. Uh, good evening. Thanks for doing the net, uh, Tyrone. Doing a good job always. Um, I had put a, a link in the uh, chat on uh, Seed Studio makes a, an an eighty six um, Odyssey uh, single board computer. They have a whole bunch of different versions, and the thing that's unique about it is it runs Windows. You can even get Windows uh, already on it if you want. And it's also got the GPIO that's compatible with um, the Raspberry Pi, so you can take Raspberry Pi devices and hook up to it. And it also has an Arduino um, interface on it. And uh, it's a very powerful little single board computer, and I bought one. It's only 110 millimeters by 110 millimeters. And um, I'm thinking I was going to use this probably for Aries work. And um, I can even get a small display that will plug into the GPIO interface. And um, I'm going to, I ordered a, um, an SSD um, to plug into it, and I'll probably put a dual boot with Linux and Windows on it. But it looks like a pretty neat little computer to use for ham radio operations. So I just thought I'd bring it to people's attention. This is K0LEI, back to that. Very cool, yeah. Seed Studio um, uh, Odyssey board here. Uh, very, very cool. Yeah, that's uh, Seed with uh, three E's. And then uh, Studio, SeedStudio.com. And you can also, uh, just if you uh, Google search for that, you will, uh, it's the Odyssey board, uh, x86 compatible. Windows can run Windows 10. And yeah, it seems like a really compact way to, to do ham radio in the field. It's, uh, we don't have to necessarily be on Linux anymore. If, if we don't want to, we can, we can move over to, uh, to Windows 10. So uh, full-blown uh, desktop OS, uh, very, very cool. Uh, very good information there, Larry. JK. Yeah, AA zero JK. Fred, go ahead. Yeah, I just went over to the ARRL website and typed in Ballon, uh, and uh, they've got a uh, article there by uh, W seven EL. It's whiskey seven Echo Lima, and uh, he goes in on what Ballons do and how they do it. Might be helpful to. Uh, uh, take a look at that particular article and get some of the fog out of our headlights here <laughs> and uh, uh, get our terminology and everything here proper. So uh, hopefully if uh, you, know, you have access to that, go, go to the ARRL website. They've got several articles there and uh, uh, take a look at those and see if those help and let us uh, know. Uh, back to net control, AA0JK. All right, uh, it is your JK Fred. Thank you for the information there. Uh, ARRL.org. If you uh, do a search for uh, Ballin, uh, you can find quite a few articles there as well as as you had mentioned. So, uh, yeah, good follow up on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I will check that out. This is W60. Okay. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I was just uh, finishing up watching the uh, video here on the uh, the Odyssey. Yeah, it looks like a really uh, pretty cool device, pretty expandable. Um, you could do pretty much everything you could do with a with a, like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, but uh, with a full blown OS. So uh, yeah, cool. Uh, thanks uh, again on that, uh, Larry. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Does anyone else have any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net or that would be of any interest, uh, please call now.
All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. I can uh, pass a few things here and then uh, bring it back up to the net. Um, again, more over on ARRL.org uh, forward slash news for uh, everything ham radio related. Um, plenty of information, uh, different countries getting uh, different access, different bands. Um, looks like um, one of the... Uh, one of the major things from last week we discussed is the um, the FCC is moving forward with um, the proposed application fee um, for uh, uh, due to the Ray Bombs Act, but for uh, new applications, renewals, uh, upgrades, vanity call signs, um, very soon here we'll start to see a thirty-five dollar fee for those. Um, so. That's uh, looks like to be the news on that. Uh, more recent news is uh, uh, the QSO Today Virtual Ham Expo is going to be is uh, returning uh, March thirteenth through the fourteenth. A full forty eight hour um, uh, host. Um, there's going to be a lot of events coming up there, so if you had uh, missed it last year, uh, if you go to QSOTodayHamExpo.com, you can find more info and uh, see what it was like last year and uh, see what it's going to be like uh, this year. Uh, again, briefly on that, there's going to be... Um, uh, let's see. Um, it, it, registration is required, but it's free, I believe, um, to attend. Um, or no. Uh, maybe it's not this year. Um, but there's going to be uh, personalities Bob Alfin, uh, K4UEE, uh, subject of uh, favorite D expeditions, DXCC top uh, 10 most wanted, Michael Forrester, W0IH on using the Arduino in your shack, and Ron Jones, K7RJ on 3D printer basics. So again, more info on ARL.org uh, forward slash news, as well as their, their website, uh, QSOTodayHamExpo.com. Don't have really too much else, um, but always always good blogs to read, rtl-sdr.com. Um, using a SDR dongle as a pan adapter, so you can basically use your use the same transmission line um, for both your radio and uh, SDR, so you can transmit at the same time and uh, not have it uh, uh, have any issues there. So um, a pretty cool setup on that. Um, decoding, decoding Orbcom satellites. Uh, they run a global network of low Earth orbit satellites to perform uh, services such as IoT, machine to machine communications, asset tracking, uh, telemetry, government communications, uh, and they can be received around 137 megahertz. Uh, so TechMinds uh, over on YouTube uh, did an interesting uh, video on how to uh, decode those satellites and the, uh, the telemetry within them. Another good blog to read, hackaday.com. Um, they have a, a podcast, a weekly podcast. I'm trying to find the post here. Uh, but if you enjoy kind of uh, talking about electronics or listening to uh, people talk about electronics, et cetera, et cetera, there is a, uh, just a good podcast uh, that they put out uh, um, weekly. So if you, if you um, hackaday.com is their website, H-A-C-K-A-D-A-Y.com. Great blog, uh, great articles to read, um, and then a nice, uh, nice weekly podcast. Um, podcast uh, to, to kind of wrap things up so you can find them on your uh, any kind, sort of podcatcher, uh, but it'll be the, the Hackaday podcast. Uh, let's see what articles they have here.
W0TX repeater. Going into 3D printing, um, a lot of uh, a lot of topics on that. Um, talking about um, assembling circuits and uh, tinker kits. Um, there's uh, looks like elect electrical electric puzzle board lets you assemble circuits with ease. Uh, so um, see many hackers learned about electronics over years with home experimenter kits from Radio Shack and its ilk, uh, eschewing uh, sol soldering for easier screw and spring based connections. Uh, they let the inexperienced build inexperienced build circuits with a minimum uh, minimum amount of fuss, teaching them the arcane ways of the electron along the way. Uh, this uh, person has put a modern spin onto the form with his electric puzzle game. Uh, build consists of uh, 3D printed blocks, each containing a particular electronic component or module. Um, the blocks can be joined together to form circuits with magnets in the blocks mating with screws in the motherboard to hold everything together and make electrical contact between the parts. It's a project that requires a significant amount of 3D printing and assembly to build, um, but it makes assembling circuits a cinch. So a variety of circuits that can be built is impressive. Uh, they show everything from a simple LED and switch arrangements to touch sensors and even low-powered uh, Tesla coil. Uh, we imagine playing with the blocks and snapping circuits into place would be great fun. Um, so yeah, this is a just a great uh, kind of physical block form building of, uh, of electronic circuits. Um, so uh, very neat. Just watching a video of uh, he's swapping in parts with a uh, nine volt power and uh, four hundred seventy ohm. Uh, a resistor and uh, looks like a potentiometer, 100k uh, potentiometer now, and he's uh, making it uh, make an LED uh, brighter and, and dimmer, and uh, just easily swapping parts out uh, f for one another. Um, so very cool. Not much more at the moment um, from my end that I've been able to uh, pick up over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, but this is K1DBC Net Control. If anyone else has any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net, uh, please call now. All right, W zero FFC, uh, Jerry. I got you checked in. Comment. Yeah, A zero JK with the comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I like what uh, you had there on the mobile antennas up there displayed on that uh, web page, and uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, I noticed the the mounting of some of those uh, uh, components. You want to keep them away from your. Uh, uh, airbags. When, when uh, you mount your equipment, make sure that it does. That uh, if you uh, have an accident or activate your airbags, that uh, you don't have your amateur radio equipment coming up at you. So it's very important uh, to consider the location of your equipment uh, when you install it. A A zero J K back to net control. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I was looking through a um, just a gallery of here of a FTM 300DR. Somebody did a mobile install into their um, 
looks like Lexus uh, SUV here. Uh, pretty slick looking install um, that they did here. So yeah, good good points. You want to make sure that any any time you're mounting uh, equipment and mobile mobily, it's it's away from any sort of uh, airbag. Uh, there's looks like there's some SRS uh, curtain airbag, a side airbag here. Uh, so hopefully uh, that wouldn't have any uh, any cause any issues uh, if that uh, deployed. Uh, great point. Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Anyone else have any other comments, questions, anything you'd like to bring up for the net? Please call now. Uh, LAI. Yeah, K0LAI, go ahead. Talking about airbags, um, I had a, a collision back a few years ago in a 2014 um, town and country and it was a head-on collision and uh and uh, i had my radios and stuff in there and none of them were damaged except the um what i had mounted um on the window which was the um gps and that got thrown when uh that ended up getting thrown down on the floor somehow but it still operated it was still working but it was really weird that you know, everything else was okay. The radios were okay in the car. The the um, I had a radio mounted on the top of the of the um, console and stuff, and all that um, seemed to survive okay. It was just the the impact uh, through the um, the GPS, uh, which was mounted on the window down to the in, onto the um, floor, actually, because of the way that things happened. But anyway, it all survived, which is something. And the worst that I had was when the airbags deployed, I had um, my knees were kind of sore from the airbags, but everything else was fine. Gotcha. Sounds good. Yeah, glad you uh, got uh, got out of that relatively unscathed and uh, that... Uh... <laughs> Things could have been much worse. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's interesting as well. The uh, the GPS unit got got thrown um, due to that. So yeah, very interesting. Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Again, anyone else have any other comments, questions uh, you'd like to bring up for the net? Please call now. Okay, this is K1DBC Net Control. I don't have much else. I can clever some uh, club business and then uh, throw it once more out to the net to see if we have anything. Um, and I can uh, go ahead and do that now. Double. N zero TRP late check in. All right, N zero TRP, Jim, got you checked in. All right, yeah, more info on the club, uh, w0tx.org. Um, we're going to have a... Our upcoming meeting is going to be January the 20th. Uh, presentation is going to be on ICOM 705 QRP rig, uh, presented by Robert K0RCW. He's going to put uh, the he's going to talk about uh, 705, 
how it's a game-changing all-mode QRP HF VHF portable SDR. It puts out about 10 watts using an external DC. Excuse me, or 5 watts using the included uh, HT uh, battery pack. Uh, 2.4 battery uh, radio draws relatively current, uh, little current, uh, solar friendly, and can be used for pedestrian mobile ops. Uh, D Star APRS DPS capabilities. Um, so he's going to <clears throat> take a uh, take us through it and uh, also talk about his Alex loop antenna as well. So um, more info on that w0tx.org, and uh, you can find out how to join that. It's all online. Also recently released was our uh, January 2021 um, roundtable. Uh, so for more info on that, again, w0tx.org, and then you can find the, uh, the link on the top for the, uh, the roundtable. And uh, you can uh, go through, um, see the President's Message by uh, Jerry Vailhauer. Um, he talks about uh, the upcoming meeting as well. Um, tech Committee reports, Learning Net reports uh, Fred has done here. And uh, so, yeah, more info on, on the club, everything uh, inter, uh, intergoings uh, with, with us, and uh, everything else within the hobby. Um, pretty good uh, um, publication to read. So uh, more info, w0tx.org. I think that's all that I really have at the moment. Um, again, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Um, I'll throw it back out to the net. Any other uh, check-ins, comments, questions, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net? We have about uh, 10 or so minutes uh, left in the net. Please call now. Okay, again, uh, this is K1 DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. Um, it's, uh, we are nearing the end of the net, but again, if you have any comments, questions, anything you'd like to bring up about what we've discussed so far, or anything else you'd like to bring up, uh, please call now. K0 double M WMO with a comment. Yeah, Jacob, KE0WMO, go ahead. Just like to say thank you, everyone. Uh, my check-in was my first amateur transmission ever, um, and I've been having fun listening. So thanks, everyone, for your time. Excellent. That's great to hear, uh, WMO Jacob. Yeah, glad to hear. Uh, you're able to uh, make it in, and uh, glad to hear you're uh, on the air. So yeah, don't ever hesitate. Uh, we're here uh, every Wednesday except the third Wednesday, and um, there's always people on the air, and there's always always things going on. So yeah, don't ever hesitate to, uh, to reach out if you ever uh, need any help or anything. But yeah, welcome into the fold, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for checking in. Okay, any other uh, comments, questions, uh, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for the net, uh, please call now. All right, I might start to uh, wrap things up here. Um, Again, these are recorded and put up on YouTube. Um, they have been for the last few months here. Uh, so uh, you can always go on there and uh, go back and listen and watch what we've discussed. 
Um, I'll, I'm trying to have some upcoming um, content for putting together some uh, some soldering kits, so hopefully that'll be uh, coming up here soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can view uh, past nets, past presentations um, over the last uh, half a year or so. And um, yeah, for more info on that, W E R E G R eight on YouTube, or uh, you can search for W zero T X D R C, and you should be able to find uh, links to there as well. Okay, with that, I will take a final call. Any other check-ins, comments, questions, anything else, this will be the final call. Uh, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Additionally, we also have a groups.io page there. A uh, recent uh, topic here by Larry, as he mentioned, uh, that Seed Studio board, so you can find a link to there. And uh, we also post links to uh, past uh, material uh, uh, net topics and things like that as well. So groups.io forward slash G forward slash ham learning net. Uh, you can find uh, and sign up for there. You'll get uh, email notif notifications when... Uh, when we have the net, so that's uh, that's another way to uh, to contact the net. Uh, Groups.io forward slash g forward slash ham learning net. Feel free to contact us via email via groups.io, via the air, however you'd like. If you'd like to participate as an Elmer, uh, net control operator, um, whatever. Uh, and, and it's really quite informal, so you really don't need to do that. I mean, you, you're more than welcome to uh, to contact us via those methods, but uh, if you want any, any given Wednesday evening, just let us know, and uh, we're also we're more than happy to just kind of walk you through the process. All our uh, scripts are online. You kind of just got to read it and keep the conversation going. So, again, you can email us drclearningnet at gmail.com or uh, groups.io forward slash g forward slash have learning it over on youtube.com forward slash w-e-r-e-g-r-e. This evening, we had a total of 14 check-ins, and we'd like to thank and appreciate everyone who participated. We especially appreciate and thank our Elmers. Uh, thanks to the Denver Radio Club uh, for allowing us to use their repeaters for this net. We invite you to join us on the third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. for an Elmer session prior to the regularly scheduled Denver Radio Club meeting at 7. The Elmer session is very much like what uh, we have here, just a general Q&A, show and tell. Um, again, that's at 6 p.m., more info, w0tx.org. It's uh, through a Google uh, Google Meet uh, link, so uh, you don't even need to be a ham radio operator to uh, participate in that. W0TX repeater. And again, everyone is welcome to all of our, activi our activities. Uh, please don't ever hesitate uh, to join in, um, and we're more than happy to, uh, to help you out. Uh, so please join us next week, 19.30 hours, 7.30 p.m. for the next Learning Net. Uh, all stations, please stand by while the repeaters are placed into normal mode. P.L. On. All right, thank you all for checking in. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, glad to see more participation on YouTube, and uh, yeah, thank you all for being here. Uh, happy New Year's. Hopefully things go better. So uh, with that, 7-3 to all, and I am clear. Everyone take care.